anything. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. As it's been uh, said to you this morning, our theme is a reset, so let me go straight into our subject this morning. Why reset and how do you reset uh, your life? As an example, in the last few months, uh, here in Lighthouse, we reset, uh, I think, uh, three laptops. Uh, we reset, uh, I reset my home computer. This week, we reset uh, the church computer. So we've done it, and sometimes computer becomes very slow. And it runs to a crawl, and there are some bugs, blue screen software don't work. It can be a, uh, now you need to identify the problem and fix it. So it can be a motherboard problem, a video card problem, a hard disk, uh, or Windows needs to be reinstalled completely, which we have done uh, this week. So when I tried to reset my home PC not too long ago, the whole night it had been like trying to reset the windows and then I received this message uh, in the morning, this PC couldn't be repaired. <laughs> so why? Why my PC cannot be repaired? I followed all the steps. It's because there were problems to fix first and then it could be uh, reset. So it is with our uh, spiritual life. Uh, it can be true also of uh, other areas of our relationship. So as we begin a new year, how can we reset our spiritual life? Um, and uh, maybe we can follow similar steps to as uh, we reset a PC and apply it. We follow a sort of diagnostic. If you go to Google and you see my Windows 10 is slow, you will have many, many uh, informations to do. Or oh, first check this and check that and try this and try that. And if this doesn't work, then try this. So you follow a bunch of uh, diagnostic. So we can do that too. It's time to reset and to place our focus back on what really matters and who really matters uh, in our life. And we want to consider these next few days. What a good opportunity it is that today we start with a week of fasting and prayer. And that's the ideal time that we have. Consider the next few days as an opportunity to refresh your soul and also to strengthen and recharge your spirit. You know, this year, life can bring us a lot of surprise. We don't know what. Uh, things, some of these things will be good. Some of these things will be complicated. Some of these things will bring worries and it will be difficult and certainly we will have to choose options in our lives. Uh, so life is fast. And it gets to us in time when we sometimes do not know. And it's possible that we will at times feel that we lost control on the events, on our life, and that we feel helpless. Or that sometimes we run empty, we're dry, and, and we don't like it, but we feel a distance between us and God, and our spiritual life is empty. So, but one thing remains uh, true in the midst of all the demands and pressures of life is that God remains. Amen. God is there, He is faithful, He is good. For those of us who were here this morning, Pastor uh, read the wonderful Psalms uh, to remind us of, of God's faithfulness, of His goodness in our lives. How God will be present, how God will manifest Himself, how much or often will we abide in Him and will we abide in His Word this week? So why should we uh, reset? So I want to start with a text in Jeremiah. Why should we reset? This is what the Lord says. Uh, the Lord is speaking to us this morning. Those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord, they are like shrub in the desert with no hope for the future. They will live in the barren wilderness. That is a picture that comes from the Lord. It is a, it is a warning. It is a fact. It is a truth 
this you choose this you get that this is what our life will be i i don't want a barren life you don't want a barren life this i know i am sure i don't even have to ask you a question how many don't want a barren life i know it's uh, you, you don't want that and and we here uh, see a comparison to a, sh a shrub uh in the in the wilderness so we don't we don't want that and why why would our heart turn to be barren and why do we need a reset the next verse tells us the heart it's always a question of the heart my heart your heart toward god the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick there's a disease in our heart. There's, there's something wrong with the human heart since the fall in the Garden of Eden and it's been passed on from generation to generation. Our heart is inclined in a certain direction and uh, who can understand it? Happily, there's somebody that can understand our hearts. You maybe cannot understand your heart, me also. Uh, you cannot understand mine, I cannot understand yours. So we have conflicts, we have disappointments, and we have all sorts of uh, relational problems. But there is one that uh, knows uh, our heart, hallelujah, and we, we can uh, trust him this morning. There's a quote that I inserted here from Matthew Henry. There is a deceitfulness in our hearts that we are not aware of and do not and we do not suspect to be there a deceitfulness in our heart we don't know it's there it is subtle and false it is a common mistake to think that our own heart is much better than is really then th this is so true but it is the same thing that's why it says a common mistake we all see ourselves like we're spiritual we all see ourselves like we're doing fine and we don't have problem we ignore problem we forget problems we justify problems in our hearts we neglect things in our life we go on with our life and we assume or we want to believe that we are doing fine but at the beginning of this year if our life as a computer crawls and it's it's dry and there's no power and things are not running right in our lives and uh, it's the good time to to do the the reset who can describe how bad the heart is so we can see that in, in our lives here but the lord knows the heart so there's a hope over there and i want you to pay attention to verse 10 i the lord this is a comfort, this is a promise, this is an assurance of the Lord. He, he searched the heart, he knows your heart, he knows my heart, he knows our mind, our mind is so tricky and filled with uh, all sorts of goals, ambitions and desires and, and dreams and all this, but says, I the Lord give to every man according to the fruit of his deeds. He, he will give according to us, according to our desire, to our focus, to our going to him for help or ignoring him. It's, it's up to us. We, we make choice that regards the, the, the health or the well-being of our spiritual life. It's, it's in our hands. But the Lord says, I will give you according to that. So I want to urge you as we begin this week, what is in your heart? How do you want the Lord to give you something that will fit your needs? Something that you can imagine this morning and this week, if you go to the Lord and you admit your need and you confess what's in your heart the areas of darkness if you go to him with the reality and the truth of your life what he can do he is ready he is working he knows and he will give according to your research to your desire to your prayer to your cry for help he will give you according it amen that is good to know that is really good to know that amen and then if we continue, there's another example, uh, illustration in this uh, text, in this chapter. A person 
We were talking about the heart and the inclination of the heart and how s subtle and false it is and the, 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 the directions that our hearts wants to take all the time because it, w we, we are in a fallen state. So here we have an illustration, a person who gathers wealth by unjust means is like a partridge that hatches eggs it did not lay. Uh, that's, a, that's a weird or strange <laughs> illustration to bring, but it, it just makes sense. Uh, one is like a shrub in the wilderness that lives barren. The other one is like a partridge. A partridge steal the eggs that don't belong to him, that doesn't come to, from him, and he just use and, and take, it, take it in. But then we read in this text that in the middle of his life, it will leave him. These are going in the wrong direction is making a uh, wrong choice and trying something that will not bring blessing and and the and the lords uh, in our lives and in the end he will prove to be a fool there is a right way and a wrong way to go about our life about any task that we do and jeremiah says that the person who becomes rich or, or that make choices in their life with unjust means uh, will end up foolish at the end and alone because a partridge uh, hatched the eggs that are not his but the eggs will not belong to to her and the chicks that may come out of that will will go away from him so you don't keep that you don't keep that amen so we are warned by the word of the lord that uh, because of our heart uh, things will not go as 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 planned you know whether you are working or like your children they are in in school or you are getting a promotion or you are passing an exam or you are gaining success in your life if it is by this honest means it will never bring god's blessing and it will not have a lasting happiness it is in the wrong direction so after that we look at the comparison of the two uh, trees that are described by Jeremiah at that point. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a river bank with roots that reach deep into water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. What a difference in the comparison between the tree that remains green and fruitful and the shrub that has no hope for the future and live a barren life in the wilderness. Amen? Hallelujah. So uh, in that verse, it says, The person who trusts in the Lord and whose confidence or hope or trust is in the Lord. The first verb is the action of trusting. Something happened, you, you trust the Lord, you hold on to the Lord. But the other one, the second uh, term, is like, it's out of life experience. You have grounded your life. Uh, you've already experienced the faithfulness of the Lord. You are walking the life, having the Lord as your shepherd, that you will not lack, and your life is centered and secure and safe, uh, based on the Lord, on who the Lord is. And you have the two kinds of people who are here who are contrasted. One that trust in human strength uh, and human abilities, uh, we are used to take care of our own and things like this and those who trust in the Lord. In times of trouble, one remains barren. One finds no strength to draw on. Uh, there's nothing there. There's, there's no life coming out. It's, you're, it's alone. It's a lonely uh, shrub in the wilderness. But those who trust in the Lord will always have enough strength abundant strength to draw on and more than enough there will be enough to share enough to bear fruit so that's that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of strength so that even more to face the crisis and the hardship and the the challenges because in verse 7 it says such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought 
So there's trouble there in this text. It's not like, like all green. It's not like all easy. This morning when Pastor, uh, bro, uh, Sister Penina uh, started the service and asked some declaration of thanksgiving, most of our declaration of thanksgiving had to do with some sorts of blessing and answers, positive answers to prayer. But not all of us are out of the bush yet. Not all of us have experienced all of these glorious victories. Some have prayed and something else has happened in their life. But does that mean that the Lord was not there? Does that mean that the Lord did not help? You know, sometimes the Lord will provide deliverance, healing. At other times, the Lord will provide strength through the valley, uh, presence and comfort through the hardship. So it's not all on one side. And you see that in Hebrews chapter 11 and the heroes of faith. There are two groups of people, one who experience victories and battles and go through fire and all of these uh, big uh, exploits. And another group who are persecuted and alone and uh, beaten up and uh, that they will perish holding on to your faith. But both groups are part of the heroes of faith. So we, we see that. But the Lord has promised, blessed are those. So it's up to us this week if we want to keep on holding to our blessing and uh, see the Lord coming true to us. Wouldn't you prefer to be like a well water tree this year than, than a lonely shrub in the wilderness? That when times of crisis will come, you will have supernatural access to supernatural strength and, and help from the Lord. So that is, I have a quote for you, and please, I, I, I want us to repeat it uh, later on so that it will sink in our hearts. I love it. The soul that rests on God is watered from his throne. And I, I think that is so wonderful. The soul that rests on God is watered on his throne. Can we say that part by part this morning together? The soul that rests on God is watered from his throne. One more time. The soul that rests on God is watered from the throne, from his throne, from the throne of God. Can you try to say it to your neighbor this morning? Say it to someone beside you. Rest on God is watered from his throne. Turn on the other side. The soul that rests on God is watered from his throne. Praise God. Let, let's keep that in our heart this year. I, I love the fact that it is watered from the throne of God, from the heart of God. It comes from the Lord directly into our life. So the first diagnostic this morning at the beginning of, of the year is reset your trust. Reset your trust. Life can come at you very fast. Jesus says you will have many tribulations. This year, some of us will have personal crises, uh, family-related or children. You know, I feel in my heart this morning, in my prayer, I had something, a special feeling or an emotion for the families in the church. Families with children. Because really, children occupies much of our worries. It, it's, it's like a, a big chunk of our life, of our energy, of our attentions, of our desires, of our thoughts. So for you who have uh, families in the church, um, you know, reset your trust because the Lord has promises for you and for your family. You, we have international event. Uh, I talked with Sister Helen in Australia Friday on my way back home because I felt like I haven't heard from her for a long time. And the fire, because the last time we prayed for them, remember they were almost going to be evacuated two times and uh, the firefighters were going to come and, and uh, pour some uh, um, anti-fire uh, anti or... Uh, something to push fires or keep the, the brush from... Uh, finally, they didn't have to go through that. The fires displaced. But of course, this is a, a super 
natural disasters what is happening in, in Australia you see it in the news so we we have things like that uh, what is happening in Iraq with the US the Hong Kong protests like these things are are happening this year the the trade war these things are happening it's affecting our lives whether we like it or not it's just a reality that is affecting and it will have effect like i was talking or chatting with a friend uh, from hong kong was an art gallery and she told me that uh, uh, she moved to switzerland so that the, the schooling of the of a, of a child uh, she's doing it over there because of what's happening in hong kong and many people will have the, the stress of uh, what's happening and all the decisions we will have to make this year that we don't know today they are in the future but when we reset our trust in the lord there would be uh, water coming from the throne when it will be time you will not be alone because god will be with you so make sure that as you begin this new year you reset your trust you make a commitment to the word of god because that's where that's what build your trust your faith and then prayer is where you express your trust so when you receive uh, foundation f to put your trust on amen? amen praise the lord so now we want to go to another illustration uh, many as we begin a new year we are concerned with our health and many uh, will want to have a, a cleansing of your body or a detox uh, we call uh, and uh, we are going to look at a text that is a parable of the cleansing of the heart. And it comes from Second Chronicle, chapter 29. There's wonderful lessons here in this text here. Ezekiel, son of Ahaz. Ahaz was a bad king. Ezekiel was a good king. And then he called the people, listen to me, you Levites. Now consecrate yourself. Consecrate here is sanctify, uh, clean, prepare, like uh, make yourself holy, ceremonially clean, uh, and, and a, prepared, a state of prepared to go before the Holy God. Okay, so now consecrate yourself so you can consecrate the temple of the Lord. Remove, so that includes removing something from the sanctuary, what is cere ceremonially or what is unclean. For our fathers were unfaithful to God, what they, have did, what they have done. They have turned away their faces from the Lord's dwelling place and turned their backs. They closed the door of the temple porch and put out the lamps. They did not offer incense or burn sacrifices in the sanctuary of the God of Israel. That's a description of what happened in Israel at that moment. The temple that is the place of communion, of worship, of sacrifice to seek forgiveness and God's blessing his people has been shut down. Not only neglected, worse, it's been shut down and it's been even dirtied. So my sons... Are you his sons and daughters this morning? Yes? yes? My sons, my daughters, do not be negligent now, for the Lord has chosen you to stand in his presence, to minister to him, to be his ministers, and to offer sacrifices. Let's, let's dwell on that uh, statement for, for a while. We are the children of God. Uh, we know that uh, in the letters of Peter's we are a holy nation a priesthood and you know we have that that role we in Christ Jesus to stand in the presence of the Lord through the death of Jesus Christ his blood is given access to minister to serve God to to honor him to to walk with him to to obey him to 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 minister to him to be his ministers, like his, his ambassadors, to, that our life will reflect him. And to pray, offer sacrifices, to sing the songs, to, to build his church uh, against which uh, the, the, the gate of hell shall not prevail. We are that church, that glorious church that is being prepared, that is without blemish. 
so that when Christ comes, it's ready, it's beautiful, like a bride, uh, ready. So we, we see in this, turn, in this text here, the expression uh, in verse uh, 6, have turned their faces away and turn their backs on him. That is a state, a description of, of a behavior. And uh, there's something to look into that. They gave God their back instead of their face. And in every opportunity with God, we have that choice. What is God going to see when God wants to deal with us? He's going to see your back or is going to see your face. And the face represents what? The face represents uh, eagerness, attention. Look at the uh, young couple who are just discovering each other and they are in love. Oh, they are just like their eyes is there and they want to hear everything. They don't want to waste any minutes of that precious time being in love, the feeling of being together, the attention is all there. Yes, tell me more, tell me more. And then, uh, you know, you, you see sometimes those who have parents, you see your children, you are talking to them. You want them to pay attention to your word, but they don't want to listen to you, so they are turning their backs. They are kind of showing you they are listening, but they are not really listening. They are, you know, showing you the, the cold shoulder. It's like uh, they are ready. As soon as you will finish criticizing them, they will run away in the other direction. So we do, we do that with, with the Lord also. The face, pay attention, it shows eagerness. The back shows it's not interested. We will do what we want to do anyway. This is us and our choices and our relationship with the Lord. It's either the face or it's the back. So this week we have such an opportunity to fast, to pray and to reset. What is God going to see? Our back or our face? That's up to us this morning. Just a challenge that I want to bring to you this morning. This kind of negligence that we have read, that we are reading this morning, came from the father of Ezekiel. A generation before, he was one of the worst king of Judah ever, and he's the one. And I will read you just a one line from that. Ahaz collected the utensils of God's temple, cut them all into pieces, and closed the doors of the Lord's temple. Then he made altars all over the land. That's what he did. And the Levites and the priests and the people willingly complied with the king. So now the son comes, Ezekiel, and he, he sees this, and his heart goes to God and says, it's time to reopen the temple. It's time to, to do it for the Lord. It's time. You know, really, it's always time to reopen, you know, the gate of our relationship with the Lord. It's always time, and the Lord is always ready for that. There, there's, there's a time to clean out and to use the temple as it was intended to be. When Ezekiel called the priests and the Levites in this text, he focused on, the, on his calling. He's the one who says, come on, you know, don't be negligent, don't be careless, because the Lord has chosen you. The Lord has chosen Lighthouse. You know, Lighthouse is a special church. 28 years, it's special. We have missions, we have bear fruits, we have people who are, we are connected with all over the world. We have great foundation, we are small church, but that bubbles with potential. Still now, what is the church going to be in the year to come? And in the years to come, uh, this is up to us. That's why we are reading, my sons, my daughter, don't be careless, don't be negligent, because the Lord has chosen us. We are here in fellowship. We are here in unity. We have been called. We could be scattered in any other churches in Hong Kong. There are plenty of good churches in Hong Kong. But the Lord has brought us in, Hong Kong, in Lighthouse here. I remember the first time I came to Lighthouse on the fourth floor. Uh, we, we just moved here two weeks First week we went to another church because that's the one we had known in the past. And then the second week some friends invited us. We went on the fourth floor 
It was full with life. There was no comfort there. There was not enough chairs. Everybody was crowded. there. The children were having Sunday school in front of the lift outside. But there was a church. There was life. There was the, the word of God was there. The church was growing so fast that we had to move into uh, hotels. And then from hotels back to uh, buying the property. You know, we have big, big churches in Hong Kong. They don't have a property. Uh, when we do the monthly pr pastor's prayers, uh, they are amazed uh, to see such a small uh, church here. No, we don't have a lot of rich people in the church. But God in His goodness, God and His uh, miraculous power and faithfulness through the years have made something impossible possible and you are part of it. I mean, this is, this is something to be proud of. Now, not to be proud because of our own achievement, but proud that we, God has brought us to a place that is still here, that functions. Uh, you have pastors, you have a board, uh, uh, th there's no dishonesty here, uh, we are still in unity, we have good music and committed uh, people in every level that we have here in the church. We have uh, people who sacrifice their Sundays to clean the church so that next Sunday it's, it's clean. We have people who do repairs that are ready to, to, for everything. We are so blessed, mm -hmm. but we are so easy to criticize. We are so easy to take for granted the blessing of the Lord and not to see the holy, the holy and to, and to hear. We only see the profane. We only see the business side. We only see the, 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 what doesn't work. We are quick to open our mouth to, to, to share to other friends, la, 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 the pastor or this or that. We are, it's easy. I do it. You do it. We all do it. But let's, let's, let's reset. Let's reset our tongue. Let's reset our hearts. Let's reset our, 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 our gratefulness unto the Lord. We have a great church here with great potential. Amen? Amen. So, so we are part of it, and it's, it's wonderful. My sons, my daughters, don't be negligent. Don't be careless. Just think about the calling that God has given to you. He has called you. He has chosen you to, to stand in His presence. To be his minister, to serve him, that is wow. That is wow. Can I hear a wow this morning? Wow. We usually say amen, but let's say wow instead this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Getting back to focus on the calling to serve and to honor God. Amen. Hallelujah. What time is it? Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> It's not almost time to finish. I, I have other, other things. Like it's a very good text here. It's a very good text. So let me just go say a few more things. Brother Stephen, would you please come along as I'm saying things and uh, m the music team. We want to finish this service and prayer. We can extend a little bit. So I just want to say a few more things here because now I'm, I'm calling. I'm calling you. Brothers, sisters, together, uh, to not be careless, not to not be part of what God could do or would want to do in our church, in our lives, in our heart during this week because of the tremendous privilege that God has given us this morning and this calling. Hallelujah. So what happened next? It's wonderful. They rose up, they assembled each other, and they consecrated themselves. They consecrated themselves. That means they, they cleansed themselves ceremonially. They made themselves re ready. It's purifying, sanctifying. They did it. They did it. They, then they went to purify the Lord's temple. And that's the part that I want to, you to pay attention to. Just as the king had ordered, in accordance to the word of the Lord, the priests entered the temple to purify it. And they brought out to the courtyard of the Lord's temple everything unclean that they discovered inside. Uh, if we, let's see. Yes, okay, here. You will see the, the, the mention of the time that they have used, the number of days. On the first day of the first month, they began consecrating, purifying, cleansing. Eight days later, 
they reached the porch of the Lord's temple. There was so much rubbish. It's amazing. It took them eight days to just clean the outside. Not the inside. They are not inside yet. They just to remove the rubbish from outside, the negligence and things like that. And then on the 16th day, they, for eight more days, they consecrated the inside the Lord's. On the 16th day of the first month, they were finished. And then they reported to the king, we have prepared and consecrated all the items that King Ahaz removed. They are now in front of the altar of the Lord, purified and ready to be used. What a wonderful parable of our hearts and of our life. They are in front of the altar. So if we do an altar call this morning, will you be in front of the altar? Ready? Ready to be used? Ready for service? Ready to answer the challenge that we say to stand in the Lord's presence, to minister into His name, to, to remember His calling, and, and to be aware of the of the tremendous privilege that we have as, as children of God. Eight days it took to prepare outside only in eight more days inside. So it's just an illustration for us this morning. How many days would it take for us? I think it can be very fast because this chapter finished with King Ezekiel is filled with joy. All the congregation is filled with joy because the Lord made them ready and the text finished because all of this uh, took so fast it became sudden it, it was so fast imagine for an old generation of another king everybody were without the temple in two weeks time everything the sacrifices the singing oh and there are some wonderful part that uh, the worship team would like to to hear about this uh, let me just quickly read one of them verse uh, i think 26 the entire assemblies the congregation worship the singer sang and the musician played isn't that a wonderful and it says that uh, as they began to offer the sacrifice, they started to sing the song of the Lord. Worship and singing, and everybody participates. The congregation worship, the musician plays, the singer sings. It's a wonderful picture of, of the church, of the temple, of coming to God, of offering sacrifice and prayer. Amen? Hallelujah. So let me conclude this morning and saying again the same things. When it's time to go at the altar this morning, will we be there at the altar? Are we presenting ourselves in front of the altar ready to be used? For the, ready for the master's use to use us. Amen. Hallelujah. And things that we can reset this morning, please let us stand and... Uh, what song are we singing? Come into his presence. Come into his presence. Come into his presence. Hallelujah. And can Come can I can I presence. ask you that uh, as we sing this song that some of you at least will come to the altar because I I love that picture and we don't do it enough I think in the church because sometimes we are so crowded but please Come, dedicate, consecrate, sanctify, offer yourself, make peace with the Lord, restore, reset, and just come in front of the altar and make yourself pure and ready unto the Lord. Whoever you are, even if you've never done that before, what a good way to start. Amen? Hallelujah. As we sang, come. And let us uh, close this service and, uh, and offering sacrifices of praise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. You may begin to come right now. His presence with thanksgiving in your heart. Give Him praise. And give Him praise. You may come on the stage. We have more plays.
Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for coming. We are coming to the Lord's altar. We are coming to the Lord. Hallelujah. Come for your family. Come for your children. Come for your home. Come for this coming year. Let's go into His presence. Yes, Lord, I'm coming to you, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. My heart is yours. Change my heart, O oh Lord. Fill me with your love. Hallelujah. thank you for the fathers and the mothers for brothers and sisters Lord we are your church your temple and your ministers we give you praise Lord Hallelujah, Lord God. Jesus, the name of our name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we give glory, Lord. Today, Lord, I come to the altar, oh God, hallelujah. And I want the altar of my heart to be cleansed, purified, oh God, hallelujah, and ready, ready for you. And this week, oh Lord, I commit myself that you will not see my back, but you will see my face, you will hear my voice. I will spend time in your word and I believe you will speak to me and transform. Lord, I don't want to be a barren a shrub. I want to be a fruitful, evergreen tree, oh God. Oh God, hallelujah. Oh Jesus, we are your church here, yes, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. 2020, there will be crisis in this world. There will be crisis in our lives. But Lord God Jesus, you are with us. Hallelujah. Now that uh, the, the temple is cleansed, Lord, that our hearts are being cleansed, Lord, by the blood of Jesus, by our also our offering, the offering of our hearts, the offering of self unto you, Lord. We are going to you, O oh God, Lord, to worship you, to sing the songs of the Lord. Now that we dedicate ourselves to you, Lord, we are coming near to you to bring you sacrifice of praise yes. and sacrifice of thanksgiving that our life will be a life that will honor you, that our testimony will shine, O oh God. It will reveal, it will reveal that the Lord has done the great things here, Lord, O oh God. Lord, bring a revival in our hearts. And Lord, in our homes, to our children, Lord, this generation, oh God, have so much pull in the world, Lord, so much temptation, so much desire. Oh God, we pray for our children, Lord, that they will be saved, that they will be drawn to you, that they will love you, that they will discover the joy of the Lord in their heart, that they will experience Jesus. 
Lord, you reached out to us. Reach out to them, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh Jesus, as we surrender our heart and our life to you, oh God, you will lead us into joy, into assurance and security. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and their confidence. Lord, you are my hope. You are my security, my safety. Lord God, I shall not lack in anything. Hallelujah. You are setting me free, Lord. Right now, Lord, as we stand at your altar, you are removing from our hearts and from our life through the blood of Jesus everything unclean, O oh Lord, unclean thoughts, impure thoughts, improper speech, negativity, depression, discouragement and Lord you are changing it into an experience of the joy of salvation it's time to reset it's time to begin again hallelujah oh God oh God hallelujah it doesn't take long if you are serious God is ready to meet us right here right now oh God Lord, reset my trust in my heart. And Lord, my first love, Lord. Also my worship when I come to church. There would be songs. There would be desire. Reset my prayer life, oh God. Reset what is important, really essential. Reset my zeal, oh God, for service, a desire. And Lord, reset my willingness to obey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Will you extend your hands on your neighbors? Or either take their hands or put your hand on their shoulder. And just as you recommit yourself to the Lord this morning, we are doing it all together in love. That we are blessing one another. We are praying a revival, a restoration, a refreshing. <coughs> Hallelujah. The plans of God, the will of God on each and every one this morning. On it, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to wish our brothers and our sisters this morning with all of our hearts, meaning it, a happy, blessed new year, 2020, a year of strength, a year of discovering how the Lord is good, a year of maturity, a year for the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are waiting for the Lord's return. Yes. Hallelujah. And we are making ourselves ready to be ministers of the Lord. Hallelujah. What a privilege and a great calling. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.